Okay. Uh, good morning. Uh, good afternoon. And a good evening. All depends on the part of the world you are joining us from at this very moment. Um, I am Mas Chica Austin. And um, about eight hours ago, uh, we did announce our plan to come on air. Yes, we did announce that that uh, we are going to be on air, but we chose this time because of uh, different geolocations. You know, some people watch from the United States, some people watch from Europe, and some of us from Asia and other parts of the world. So um, every Sunday we tend to consider. Um, the time of coming here in order to enable people from you know hours of life and uh, probably from every part of the world to key in so we are here once again to talk about uh, if you look at your screen currently you will see the title the title the title of uh, this evening program tend to be uh, you know um, something that people we you know somehow be kicking wherever they you know they are seeing the title the journey and the jokes because i believe um the title tend not to be a common title i use in most cases so um but before we proceed it's very very important to let us know how audible we are coming out uh, also our visual let us understand how how clear we are coming out because uh, it's very very important we understand that furthermore um, it's also our responsibility to share this program because we own humanity that you know duty to get them informed as much as we think we have also you know gotten very very important to understand that uh, we ho own our we own humanity that obligation you know to to share every necessary information within the you know what knowing so that we can save humanity we always say we are humanity oriented so let us know through the uh, comment section how clear we are coming out in terms of audio and visual. Just let us know. Then we, while we are waiting for that, we have to move into this moment uh, topic. Uh, the topic is uh, the journey and the jokes. The journey and the jokes. Uh, I understand that most of us will be saying, uh, these topics tend not, you know, a, a common topic we we do embrace in most cases. But um, on this platform, we make it a duty to discuss process, not personality. Yes, that is how we have, you know, uh, how we have been rolling for years for those of us who have been you know uh, relatively long on this platform you can attest to that fact we that we talk process not personality because uh we deemed it wise to talk about process because if you get the process right definitely you will you know get the man right but when a process is faulty definitely the man we find it difficult to get anything right. Nigeria is a red placant example where the process is already on the fourth line. And that's why, irrespective of who is there, irrespective of manifestos, you know, things tend not to move our right because the process is already undermined. So it doesn't matter who come on the you know on the limelight as regards to leadership position. 
definitely the person is going to fail because the process is already faulty. And that also brings us to the struggle we find ourselves in. Uh, basically, everything we're going to talk about this moment is the struggle, the journey, the jokes, and everything uh, that is happening as much as we we know and as much as we understand. First of all, uh, I, I want to, you know, let us understand that um, each and every one of us who have, either by commission or mission, subscribe into, the, into this journey so far, is a stakeholder. It doesn't matter where you find yourself, you know, and uh, your concession, you know, your consent, uh, consent to the process or the project makes you a stakeholder. And then as much as you are an interest party, you are someone who wishes, you know, that will end well in this struggle, it means you are an interest party. That is exactly what makes you an interest party. Because you have an interest. You have something you want to project. You have something you want to protect. And that is why it's important we discuss the journey and it's important we discuss the jokes in what we are doing. You see, when people shy away to talk about the prone and con of whatever they are doing, definitely those people are going to meet a shipwreck. It's a natural thing. You can't run away from it. That's why even in the, in the automobile industry, I'm talking about those areas where vehicles are being produced. Uh, you see, after the manufacturing of certain products, I'm talking about automobile products, the manufacturer, before bringing it to the public uh, consumption, they do what we call review. They review that product. The sense of reviewing that product is that is because nothing is perfect. And on the process of trying to get that product, there are bound to be certain human errors. Take note of that. And that's why there is important for review. Revision or ability to review what one is doing is not bad. And any people who do not review to know how much we have progressed, how much we have retrogressed, how much are we static, or how far have we been static, definitely those people are going to have a serious problem. And that brings us to the struggle we find ourselves in. You see, um, we have a mother project, and that mother project is the entity called the Republic of Biafra, which was defunct in 1970s, no doubt about it. And it's this generation, we are doing everything possible to resuscitate that entity, that defunct entity, because that particular state was going to default because there was a global conspiracy. It was especially a global conspiracy that was propelled by racism. The conspiracy against the Republic of Biafra or the defunct Republic of Biafra came as a result of racial drive because certain colors believe that that entity is going to lead to renaissance to the renaissance of a black man is going to lead to you know industrial revolution of a black man and they felt to subjugate africa to subjugate the entire black race of course you should know that there's a difference between africa 
and black race. When we talk about black race, it goes beyond Africa, Caribbeans, Latin America, you know, blacks in Europe and all the rest of them. So there was a conspiracy to subjugate the black race. And that was why the conspiracy against the Biafran state was done. But let me say this, because there are certain things we fail to understand. And because we have, you know, truncated the internal ability to look towards history, we are bound to make, we are still making certain mistakes. I repeat, our inability to be disciplined towards history have made us to keep on repeating certain mistakes. And what are those mistakes we are talking about? I will give you instance. The conspiracy against the black people was not done against Ojuku as a person. The world never fought Ojuku. Late he came by the male Ojuku. The world never fought him. The person, the world, or the entity, the world, or the conspiracy was melted against was the black race. But what happened in this case was that Ojuku was leading the black race from a particular unit. It's, all, it's the way it is all over the world. Renaissance must start from a particular place. It must not be a general thing. So the conspiracy was against the black race, but Ojuku seemed to be the leader. So Ojuku was not the core target. The core target was to subjugate, to dehumanize, to truncate any iota of industrial revolution that was meant to come out from the black race. So Ojuku was at the mainstream picture, but that does not mean Ojuku was the core target. The target was the people. The target was the race. And the target was the geographical entity known as Africa. And that brings us to our modern quest for the restoration of Biafra. Mazen Namdekano is not the core target. He is the leader trying to rejuvenate the renaissance in a black race. He is the leader leading the entire race. Make no mistake, it doesn't matter whether he's an Igbo person or wherever he's born. That is inconsequential. A, a, a savior, a messiah must emanate from a unit. You must have what we call genealogical trace. Is the way it is all over the world. So where he's born is inconsequential. Uh, family he came out is inconsequential. The geographical location he came out from is inconsequential. But what is most important is that he was a he he was choosing or he manated by as a result of science of time and season. To liberate the black race, to liberate Africa. But what happened was the same conspirators, the same people who shouted down on Ojuku vision, are still resuscitating their conspiracy to shout down on the contemporary leader towards the effort to em emancipate the black race. And that is Mazen Namdekan. But I want to tell us something that most of us do not understand. Ojuku as an individual was not feared to. The subjugators, the oppressors, the whatever you call them, the imperialist and neocolonialist. They are not afraid. They were not afraid of Ojuku. 
And they are also not afraid of Mazin Nandekan. I want you to understand something. Why I'm diving into this uh, you know, uh, part of analysis is because we must understand the magnitude of challenges we are facing as a people. Don't underestimate your opponent. Neither should you also overestimate your opponent. But how do you achieve, how do you save yourself from underestimation and overestimation? Is by constant review, constant analysis of the capability of your opponent. Make no mistake about that. No matter the information you have about your opponent, is not enough. That's why you must maintain consistent analysis and evaluation of your opponent. That's why no, no country can relate with you based on past information. No country views her armament against her opponent based on past information. You don't do that. Russia is not relating with the NATO group, with the history or experience of Cold War era. No. As time keeps on moving, adjustments are made. Realities are being aligned. And what is on the table is practically confronted. You don't say... Because uh, in, during the Cold War time, America had uh, 50 warheads, and that is what we know. You must have ability to spy America, understand how their, their level of improvement. Are they improving? Are they progressing or retrogressing? And that enables you to also prepare. Why am I using state actors to give references? Is because most of us do not understand what we're talking about. So most of us are so, you know, downgraded in thinking and they believe that everything we're doing is just, you know, uh, kind of community stuff. Now, what am I trying to say? I'm, that is just, I'm, I didn't mean to digress anywhere, but for reference purposes. Now, we are not talking about the struggle. You see, I want every one of us to understand something. In as much as Western countries are concerned, in as much as the Caucasians are concerned, there is no liberation of Africa without the freedom of an evil man. I want to tell you something. These are some of the secrets they have within their intelligence circles. It's not CNN thing. It's not BBC. You see, in every region of the of the earth, that is how the Creator has made it. You cannot unturn it. In every region, salvation, emancipation must have a particular point at which it must emanate. I will give you an instance. If, for those of us who are acquainted with Christian literature, you will discover that in the entirety, in the entirety of Israel, where the Messiah came out was from Nazareth, and probably Nazareth was the smallest, if I'm not mistaken, based on uh, Christian literature. So, emancipation of a people must come out from a particular point. And these guys have been able to study the African social science. They have been able to study other planet parts of the world. They have been able to make a deep study. Deep studies, I mean to say. And where the pointer is still pointing is in Igbo land. I'm not saying this because I'm an Igbo man. 
I'm saying this based on intensive research and certain materials available. This thing has, what we're saying has nothing to do with sentiment. That is why, because this is a divine mandate. That's why when it comes to leading the black race and leading Africa, the leadership felt on the shoulder of the Igbo people. And that is why all the conspiracies, you can never put an Igbo man to the back seat. A replicant example is the 20 pounds incident of the post-Civil War era. And how people who are giving 20 pounds today are controlling the economy of Africa. You might not understand how that work. Go and make a research. Go to every African country. Go and check their microeconomic structure. I'm not talking the the mainstream billionaires. We talk. I'm, to, I'm not talking about what the mainstream billionaires. You know, Dangote or Tedela. That is not what I'm talking about. Microeconomic structure. That is what holds a country's economy. Like United States, United States looks at their microeconomic structure. Who are the ones controlling it? If you come to U.S., for instance, the microeconomic structure of U.S. is being controlled by the Jews. Go and research. A lot of stocks in U.S., the Jews are the background controlling it. If you come to U.K., for instance, the microeconomic structure of U.K., I'm talking about asset current, is being controlled by the Arabs and the Indians. I'm not talking about the mainstream side of you, counting somebody that said this is a billion. I'm talking about where you have hundreds and millions of a race being, taking hold the entrepreneurship structure of that society. So if you come to African society, whether you talk about Rwanda, whether you talk about Ethiopia, whether you talk about Uganda, whether you talk about Ghana, Burkina Faso, Equatorial Guinea, Mali, even Chad, go and research. The Igbos are controlling the microeconomic structure of these places. And these guys have these guys have taken a very deep studies. I don't want to talk about some certain deep things so that the interests of our people will not be in jeopardy, especially in sub-Sahara African region. But if you research and understand the level of control at the microeconomic base, you will understand what we are talking about. So these imperialists have taken a deep study of us and they understand that the perpetual subjugation of the Igbos is the perpetual subjugation of the black race. They know it. They understand it. And they are absolutely working on that. Now, the struggle started. The struggle for total you know, um, restoration of the state of Biafra. Most of us might not understand the need for us to have a state. You might not understand. But I'm going to I'm going to give you a kind of a clear understanding of the necessity. You see, let me use the Jews as, as an instance. Before nineteen forty five or let me say before 1947, 1949, 1948, 1949, during the establishment of State of Israel. Before that, the Jews were in control of European economy. They were in absolute control. I didn't say relative control. I mean, I, I repeat, they were in absolute control of European economy but their control was not protected because they had no state actor 
I repeat, the Jews were controlling the European economy, politics to an extent, because if you study Dreyfus affair, take your time and study Dreyfus affair that happened in France, or you study the Merchant of Venice by Shakespeare and other, you know, literatures, European literatures that put a narrative about the Jews, they were in heavy control of Europe. There was nothing in Europe. Are you talking about the agro sector? The Jews were controlling. Are you talking about pharmaceutical sector? The Jews were controlling. Are you talking about the gambling sector? Are you, the casino? Are you talking about commerce and industry? They were in control. But what they lacked before 1949 was a teeth. They were just a good dog that hadn't no teeth. So they were just they were just good. They were just controlling just the way we are controlling contra, uh, contemporary, just the way we are contemporary controlling a lot of things in Africa. I will tell you that the best restaurant in Rwanda is being owned by an Igbo man in Kigali. I can tell you that the, the president of Uganda relies heavily on Igbo man for the driving of science and technology in Uganda. And I can boldly also tell you here that even in Senegal, Sri Lanka, even in Niger, I had a story that got me baffled. That the transit route between Niger, Mali to Libya, it was a controlling a lot of, you know, interest on those routes. That was exactly what the Jews were doing in Europe before 1949. They were in deep control, but they lacked teeth. And what is that teeth? They had no state actor. They had no state actor. If you go to places like uh, Trinidad and Tobago, places you cannot imagine, you see our level of control. But having a control without a strong defensive mechanism in place does not give you the legitimate control. And that is where most of us are getting it wrong. That's why the likes of Ojo Zakalo, most of you never knew. Ojo Zakalo had investment in, you know, in different sectors of human endeavors. One of his business is Slot Airline. And at the time, Slot Airline was almost destroyed, sabotaged in Nigeria. He had a problem with Obasanjo during that time, with Titoni and Nene, the then Minister for Works. He challenged Tony and Nene, and um, Obasanjo wanted to punish him because Tony and Nene, as at that time, was a BOT. Board of Trustee of PDP, and he was so inflation. For all Jews of Carlo challenging Tony and Nene, they mesmerized his airline investment in Nigeria. He was forced to ship them outside the country, in some of African countries, to run, to fly. He was in control, but he never had that backup. And that is why most of them, you see, Certain things you might not really understand why some of them cannot easily oppose the Nigerian entity because they understand they have a lot to lose. They, 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 they might not, you know, they might, that might not be the right thing for them to do, but the truth remains most of them know 
what they are going to be to lose. And some of them who are so protectionist in nature, who are so individualistic in nature, don't want to risk those things. So you just have to understand how it works. Now, we are now coming back to the struggle, the journey, and the jokes. You see, I want you to understand something. We're in a project to save a race. And most of you never understood how large Igbo, Igbo race is becoming every day. Most of you don't understand. Because most of you are still seeing a monoracial Igbo race. No, Igbo race is the only race in Africa that is on a high speed of cross-racial identity. I will repeat what I mean. Igbo race is the only, as a result of our liberal nature, and as a result of our high mobility and integrational drive, we are the only African race that is on a high speed of doing a cross-racial breeding. I want to simplify it. In Africa, you have other races like Hausa, you have the Yorubas, you have the Zulus, you have a lot of them. In Hausa land, for instance, I'm giving you an instance. You cannot see an Hausa man. You cannot see up to 5% of the total Hausa population to say there are up to 5% Hausa men or women who have married other races, giving birth. And having their children half Hausa or and half European or half American or half Asian. The same way applies to the Zulus. The same thing applies to the Yorubas and others. It is the only Igbo people that on a high mobility of Cross racial breeding, and when you have such race, because you see, we, we are not putting normally, they're supposed to be an institution or a center studying this because this is an evolution, this is something that is happening, it's going to, it's going to be part of those things we are going to see in the near future. You will see. A Chinese telling he's an Igbo man. And you cannot say he's not Igbo. You cannot say he's a less Igbo than you. You cannot say that. Because his father is an Igbo man. We are talking about next 10 years. You can even see a purely European looking man telling you he's going to be a king of a Kahara autonomous community. And you'll be moping your mouth. How possible? Why because I was easy. No, he's an evil man. His father is an evil. Probably got married to a woman from Germany. He's not less he's not less evil. Because after all. You see what is going on because those of us who have keys of with other rays they are, our people are not being smart even teaching those students to speak more Igbo than even those of them at home for integrational purposes don't think they are making a mistake they want this their children to be properly integrated so that if there's any other thing you'll be talking to say they are not even using is a color of their skin. 
And that is what it is. It's a, it's a social evolution. So, a people with such trajectory, a people with such evolution, a people with such reality should be making a plan for their future. Because let me tell you one of those things. If we mismanage it, you see, having um, those days, I know it used to call, be called outcast. You see, if we if we don't hasten up, if we don't plan as much as we can to secure a country of ours, we cannot have a proper utilization of these people. These are brothers and sisters with other colors. We can't have a proper util utilization of them. I'm going to explain to you. For instance, Israel have the same faith. Israel have the same faith. If, if Israel wants to send an ambassador to Turkey, they search within themselves. They search within themselves. Look at Turkish Israeli and send him to Turkey. Because this person, probably the father might be from Israel, the mother is from Turkey. And they send this, this person to Turkey to project, to protect the interests of the state of Israel. Why is, why is Israel doing that? Because Israel understands the need to use them in the environment they can integrate easily and so therefore secure the interest of Israel. In our own case, we cannot, you know, see the best of these our brothers and sisters still remaining in Nigeria. Rather, if you ha if you have them and you're still remaining in Nigeria, the enemy can use them to undermine you. Because everything in life has positive and negative. I will give you instance. The current media, is it media spokesperson to Tunubu, the guy, Ngale, the guy is a half caste. I don't know. The, the current guy, I can't remember his name, Ngale something. The media aide to Tunubu. He's a half caste. But because he's still within the circle, of the Nigerian entity. What are they using him for? Of course, on the other side of it. Senator, what is it called? Senator uh, Common Sense. This guy that has a cinema. Ben Bruce. The same thing. The same thing. Because Nature abhors vacuum. And that is why we must treasure what we are pursuing. That is why we must be highly protective. We must have this understanding of the necessity for that. Yes. We must. It's important. That brings me to, because we are talking about the journey and the jokes. That brings me to the the jokes, because we must understand the battle, the realities we are facing. You see. We're in a very 
disturbing situation. When I mean disturbing situation, disturbing situation in the sense that uh, the more we we are pushing, the more we are trying to advance, the more you know the punches are coming from every dimension. Well, as a matter of fact, I do tell my father, he's only a stupid warrior that doesn't want his opponent to also react. That is just the way it is. I used to tell my dad that, that you don't expect somebody you're fighting with to fold his hand. You'll be having your successor. No, 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 except you're not serious. If you're serious, you should understand that the day you start a battle, the day you start a struggle, your oppressors can never, never fold their hands. If you expect them to fold their hands, that means you're stupid. If everything you plan in a battle is for you to win and win and win, having a winning record, that means you're absolutely not sincere to yourself. Because you must do everything to checkmate, to evaluate every advances. You see, since um, Onyendu, since 2001, uh, 2021, Onyendu was kidnapped, people have never really understand the challenges. People have not really be abreast with the realities and challenges and why people have never come to the realization is because of multiple battles the leadership of this struggle have been fighting for. you know a lot of confrontations a lot of combats i understand averagely if you ask an average one of us what do you understand as a battle we will tell you is only when you're shooting guns when you're, you know, rampaging, that is our own definition of an average one of force. That is how we understand battle. But battle have transcended to that level. Battle have transcended to that level, from that level, I mean to say. Because we be one of the one of the most disservice we did to ourselves is to believe on conventional warfare. There's only when you are shooting, rampaging, making noise that that is when you're doing something. And that is one of the most deformation we gave to ourselves. That's one of the, you know, under information we voluntarily served ourselves since 2001 we have been facing multiple non-conventional battles non-conventional wars you know from Ekwerima you know the script of Ekwerima in, uh, working himself within the self in the name of Nam the Kanu disciple. Remember the genesis of that name. He started from Nam the Kanu the disciple. You know, uh, grow for grow to a certain different names, names, names until um, he came to prime minister, <laughs> prime minister nomenclature. And every single, I want you to understand something. Every single stage of his destructive advancement, the siblings of Onyendu always give credence to that. They, they, they absolutely intended with him. You see, why we are saying this is for people, you, you, you must review. I started by letting us understand that. You must review. It's important to review whatever you're doing. 
Because if you're on a travel and you don't ask yourself, what is the distance we have covered? How many hours is remaining? Definitely you're not serious to yourself. You know, from the earlier stage we had, Onyendo said he should be allowed to speak on the radio. If I started from the disciple, this, that, and every single stage of his, we are all supported by the siblings of Onyendo. Yes, was all supported by them. And I spoke with somebody, I believe that person, the fellow, you know, is also watching this program. You know? I spoke with one of us from Asia today. After he forwarded a lot of things on my WhatsApp, and he needed me to clarify. He needed me to speak to him, and I spoke to him. I gave him a lot of chronological information. I spoke with him, you know, certain uh, 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 development, how things have been going and all this. And at the end, he was shocked. But let me say this for record purpose. You see, whatever, whatever I'm saying, internet does not for, forget. And that's why you cannot just come at you because... You are you have an internal drive to speak. You on your camera, and you start you start speaking. You should also understand, like what I'm speaking now, in the next forty years, can be invoked. It can be called upon. So that's why I must be factual in what I'm saying. Devoid of sentiment. Devoid of emotion. Devoid of. feelings because in the next 40 years you can still call upon this script there's not anybody can do about it now let let us look at issues you see the siblings of onyendu either by commission or omission have tried as much as they can to destroy this movement, to destroy this struggle. I believe this is my first time to, to be on camera and start talking. But I am talking because I have taken my time to make a whole lot of connectivities, chronological development, and came to the realization that, that they have just commissioned themselves to stop this project. But unfortunately to them, nobody can stop it. There is absolutely nobody that can stop it. Because the people have embraced, they are breast with the project. You see, every single time they try to insult, they try to demean, they try to sideline, and they try to trample upon the leadership. And whenever you ask them, some of them, some, for some of you who are close to them, and I believe perhaps some of them might be watching this program, and whenever you ask them, they only end up telling you that being a brother to Nyendu automatically is the prerogative to act the way they are acting. And it's funny. It is really laughable. Why it's laughable is because they have a very narrow understanding of what national interest is all about. They do not understand that the project is a national project. It's a project of the people. For the people and by the people. Nothing less, nothing more. They do not understand that. And that's why every effort they have pushed on the front line because they are struggling to prove that 
the family of Unyendo have the capacity to bring Unyendo out, to cut out deals. Every effort have, they have been putting have been so flawed, have been so rubbish, and have been so mesmerized. Because they lack the understanding that state actors do not fear families. There is no family or act that state actors fear. I wish, let me give you a practical example. Donald Trump is a billionaire. When I talk about a billionaire, I'm talking about a billionaire in dollar value. Not in Naira value. Donald Trump is a billionaire. Trump family is a billionaire. Is a name. But do you know why Trump rushed and set up a movement known as MAGA? I believe some of you are watching me from US. Do you know why Trump rushed and established a movement known as MAGA? The MAGA movement. He knows that government fear the people, not a family or individual. Government can crush any family they want to crush. They can crush individuals they want to crush. If there's anything the government fears, it is the people. That is why even the lives of P2B intelligently opened the movement known as obedient movement. Because by now, this current government would have deal with P2B. The, after the death with Atiku. Yes. Buhari so much mesmerized Atiku because Atiku does not have a movement. What Atiku does, during, a, during any election, Atiku will just come out, try to contest. He doesn't have a people, he doesn't have a movement. And when they wanted to deal with him, the death with Atiku mercilessly. Most of you never knew. Atiku owned a company known as Intel's. He's a major shareholder in Intel's logistics. For those of you in Iguacha and River State, you know what I'm talking about. The rubbish Intel's block Intel's from importing, remove license from them. Atiku had a BP. Why did they treat Atiku like that? Is Atiku not a big name? Atiku family is a big name. Is Atiku as a person not a big name? He's a big name. Why was he treated like a pauper? Because he was so unwise not to raise, create a movement. Why is it that when P2B, P2B will talk, they will tell him you're inciting the people? Have you seen them using the word that Atiku? Atiku talks anyhow. He wants to talk. Have you heard the federal government say, Atiku, you are inciting the people? Because they know Atiku does not have a movement. Atiku does not have any movement. He's controlling. That's why whenever government wants to finish a man, they target the movement he's controlling and deal with them. When a people P2B talk, you will hear the statement, the reaction from the government will be, P2B, you are inciting the people because the government knows that P2B have a group. He has a movement. He has a people. He has organized for himself. Not a labor party. P2B was so wise not to rely on a party move, uh, people because they can fail. Atiku relied on party people. He joins APC and the expect IPC followers to love him. No. But P2B was so wise not even relying on labor party. He created obedient movement so that anywhere he finds himself, the, the movement themselves will naturally move to that. And that was why the government tried to even say that obedient movement are very extremist, they are violent. Let's see if we can prescribe them. The same way U.S., the U.S. government tried to use the Supreme Court, use uh, the committee, the January 6th committee to target the MAGA movement. They called them, uh, I think, uh, insurrectionists, trying to blackmail the movement. Not Trump, nobody is Trump. 
the government of U.S. can end Trump tomorrow if they so desire. They don't. They can close Trump. But the problem is the movement itself. So back to the struggle. Nigerian government is using the family members of Mazenam to destroy him. But before they will destroy him, their core objective is to destroy the movement. Because they know that any day the movement is destroyed, Mazenam Dekali is vulnerable. It's as simple as that. It doesn't matter what you think. They will, they will end him. And that's why every conspiracy the government is working is to use his siblings to attack the movement. Use the siblings to destroy the movement. Let me tell you something because most of you do not understand. When Mazenam the Kalo was renditioned, Nobody was even bold enough to, to come close to him because Buhari put every energy to bring him back. Not even his siblings. They were all hiding. Not even uh, the do nothing so called uh, legal team. They were hiding. He took the boldness of IPOB to make a press statement and sent Barista Ifani a Jofo. Uh, when others were hiding, I'm talking about immediately Malami announced that Mazen Namdekano had been captured. The leadership sent Ifani a Jofo and said, Go. It was risky for anybody. Nobody could show face, not even his siblings. A four went, put a pressure, and saw him, demanded for the court proceeding to begin. At that earlier stage, he was not bad, he was not this, he was not that in the eyes of his siblings. Because none of them could come closer. Then when they now saw that it seems he's getting some winnings, they started appearing. They started appearing. They started appearing. But at the early stage, where were they? Undercover. And it got to a point that Barista Ifanye Jofo even knew the temerity of the case, the interest parties in this matter. And he told himself the truth that only him cannot handle this matter. That he needs a higher person in order to handle and to make sure that Mazenam the Khan is set free. He started digging underground. And he was able to link up with Mike Ezekum. For your information, most people do not understand. And that's why I say our people should be reasonable to understand politics. Mark Ezekum is a lawyer by profession. The same Mark Ezekum have also penetrated a lot of governments in Nigeria. Because, you know, when people, people are stupid, people tend to be irrational, they will not. Mark Ezokome have dealt, a lot, dealt with a lot of governments of Nigeria. A lot of governments that have come, he have Either he has been on their good record or on the bad record. So he knows the system. Ejofo is a lawyer. Ejofo has not gotten to the level of dialing with certain president. And he knew that the matter of Mazen and the Kanu needs somebody that has that level of contact. But Stephanie Ejofo is a good lawyer, no doubt about that. 
But has he swimming to certain rivers and oceans? No. Just like, let me give you a clear instance. They used to say big man talks to big man. There are some certain things we talk. You don't even have up to a million in your account. And you'll be talking, 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 talking. The day the meeting of people that have over 100 million will be called. It won't be there. But you will talk and talk and talk and talk. Your talking does not change the reality that you will never be on that meeting. That is like what we call class politics. Class politics. But Stephen E. Jofo understood his class. He need a higher class because of the level of this matter. Because the matter of Mazen Nam de Kano is a matter presidents are discussing. The, his kidnapping process was organized between Nigerian president and the Kenyan president. And Kenyan president must have taken instruction from British prime minister. So it is a particular class. Politics is a class politics. It's not you can in the night you sleep. It's particular class will discuss their matter, including your matter. And the Jofo knew he does not. Barista Ifan Jofo knew he does not. He's not yet in that class. Out of love for this struggle, out of love for Mazin Nandeka, he went aside himself start shopping for a man who have that class that presidents come to his house to discuss certain matter and he went to grab Mike Zokoma and most of you do not understand Mike Zokoma is an oil tycoon which means he's into political economy, he's into international politics. Because if you're if you have been in certain business, certain business exposes to certain things. For instance, if you're into drug business, there's no how you will not know all the bad boys in history in that environment. No matter how pastor pray, he will never have those bad boys contact. It's, not, it's a natural thing. It's a natural thing. If I want to, in where I'm living, for instance, if I want to address the bad boys, I have to go and meet somebody who have access, who dial with them. In order to penetrate them. If not, I'll be talking. They will even say, see that useless man talking. They, they will deal with him. They will not like it. But if somebody who played their class politics is telling them that, uh, but that one won't want to fuck up. Oh, now my man. Now my man. You cannot, I cannot penetrate them through the person who is familiar with their class. It's a reality. Whether you take, like it or not, it will definitely stay at you. So, Barry said, you you know, went far and hooked this man. Um, dear friends, I want to tell you something. Uh, I'm sorry to say this, but you just have to know it. If you watch this evening program, not shouting. I'm just quietly saying this because... You just have to understand it. Do you know what? As God may have it. Mark, Mike Ezokome, during Yaradua's time, most of you who are watching, you can use your Google. While I'm talking, you start researching as fast as possible. When Yaradua entered into seat, Yaradu is a full animal. Ribadu is also a full animal. 
Yaradua decided to deal with Rivadu because certain northern allies, what Obasanjo did was to use their brother Rivadu and deal with them, those of them who were corrupt. Obasanjo used Rivadu and dealt with a lot of corrupt northern politicians. So when Yaradua entered after Obasanjo, they told Yaradua to deal with Ribadu. Do you know what happened? Ribadu escaped and ran away, went into a side. Because Ribadu was running for his life. It was Mike Ezokome who handled Ribadu case, defeated federal government and asked Ribadu to come back. Asked Rebai, Rebaidu to come back. And Rebaidu had eternal respect for Mike Izokome. Most of you do not know this. So, a Jofo, being a Mwafo, he is, held the man so close. Was even serving a Jofana girl to a point of Yago Gano Lord, the man now serving for You can imagine a man of that level. For such a baby and Ime, who use you here the man anywhere. Never got double to end. And it was working. A messier or am I meant to so in her name? I'm sorry for those of you who cannot understand it, but tell an Igbo person to transcribe, uh, translate to you. Oga no name me ha, deka e jo forma, ihe chiga abu. Yabu bata, Mike is okay. Owe ihe Mike in eme na his family oga. Say picture, na say she yota, na saku ishi o. Ne post about him. Just because only her nature. Because all my, all my, they contacted the man each. Who make it daily her to know where we're all chicha. Get went. Mommy, I'm the last to hear me. To know where we're all chicha. Where is ye? NSA National Security Advisor near Ribadu or Abu. At that moment, the Office of National Advisor advises to the President on the issue of security. And with them a confident information and the leadership was so relaxed and happy because at that point ribadu ajo mike ozokeme ihe ihe m na so igba ma me m di na so ana igbo maka ihe na ko ihe na ore ko take you some i wish na m ga so ana my own clan my own clan dialect ribadu ajo mike ozokeme na nyupu na anunum na ogi nwa na na ekuche na ekute chiri ekute chiri onye ndu nwoke ma ogi nwa na ekute ri onye ogi nwa na anochi ikpie ke ka mga esi kwu ogu ugwo ihe meru oge yara dua na achu maiko zeke ma si a bu onye si ana Kahapu Onyeji, Bido Political Process. Kahapawa, Ka Age Sime, Mao Agea, Age Many Restructuring, but Kahapu Godonya. The Badwa Gwa Mike or Zokeme. Nia consider at all. At that point, The DOS will be the hammer because I'm not going to end the night. 
I want no card and wear such is. If I enjoy a fan, I'm a wear other members of the council. Uzubu, it's my corner. Umu no yen do no ya. Remember, they will go to the federal government already. Mike na a job for they have defeated federal government. Yota. M M M M we go federal government in certain cases. Was one down on these people a blue information Ghanaian Igbo politicians. Imazi Hemel. Igbo politicians advice a lawyer Jimako and do no yendu. Na have one yendu call fire mic is a Zakame. Na if I need your phone. That they should just blackmail them. Yeah, people, <laughs> they they finish it all already. Imagine how we have now. Most of us are married in certain places. Most of us are married in certain places. And sometimes when we comment, we laugh, but. Get one big action, get a can bigger a smile, get it over over here. We are not at least come out to go to a level. Okahasi, ga, nako nindu, blackmail, or my cousin came in Keno or Germany, a bido. In fact, before the time that he will fire my cousin, they're going to move coco, do on cable to my cousin in every definition. And the Michael Zuckerman, no bona rora yora without a nego. Because, but it's a jofo. Bia ba bia ni me, we na mupu. Poku yanka, poku yanka, ina ni manana asani mokishi. Nke no chamini, a bit of blood. Insulting. Bido me will insult Michael Zuckerman, a man of that noble pride. And the mic is okay when people go there. Case in Abia. The politicians, some of Igbo politicians are going here. You don't get being Abia. This will mesmerize you. They will sort hell out of you. All a question of time. You just first say Abia, no one again, one again, me embarrassed. At the end, why would the politician? Because the politicians, they, 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 they will soon press the button. From their uh, onion do siblings, and they were going to do nonsense and mess everywhere up. And they did that. Kalonta was in Germany insulting Mike. He tweeted it that he will fire Michael Zuckerman. That he will do this. He will do that. Were you paying him? You were not paying him. So they blackmailed the man, blackmailed your phone, and killed that. Yeah, the bad which are the Michael Zuckerman. A lawyer. No one knows him. What can she lie on me? Because they know there is no source of one. Michael Zuckerman, you don't know, uh, you know? Michael Zuckerman, uh, the day he did a newspaper. Kanonta, Nam the Kano's family, have fired Michael Zuckerman and the Joffo. The man, the man I go to a newspaper like any other person. <laughs> a contact on well. See that. Ukuri badu kurubuna. Ndana zondo. Na chingwa. Na Michael should forget them. Should forget them. Because the bad to Cholo, Kojo Nyendu, Wo Mike, Owo, Iyo Mere, Duri Yala Dua. The bad to say, don't forget them. Let, let them go to legal, let them go to court process. Let them go to court process. I think they have time for it. Let them go. Let them go to court process. And the one Mike Puano is your father, they started mounting.
destaque mountain they started mountain they will do this they will do that they will do this and of course because what is important for us is for only do to come have you asked yourself a question it's a simple question why is it that even when mike and the uh, jofa left the wife of our leader visited and still went to thank them it's a simple thing Ask yourself a question. If Mike, if Ejofor uh, are so bad, why did the wife of our leader want to thank them like hammering? Let me tell you something. A wife of a man that has kids, or that the wife of our leader. Even though when he holds the choker, only do the hand for the sake of his kids, because the pride of a woman, a woman is the husband, and all other choker women hold their father. So if those people did wrong, why would the woman went and thanked them for the one they did? And. It's your first, sir. It's my cause, sir. Okay. He's going to do something legally. From, he's going to do something legally. He started, most of you, you see, because we have a very poor memories. Most ago, they were telling us that negotiation is going on. Negotiation was going on. Negotiation was going on. That they were almost finalizing. Yeah. In fact, the, at the time, they were cajoled by some Igbo leaders that let them not worry. That they will do everything to make sure Onyendu is out that they are negotiating this is one of those things uh, Onyendu's brother tweeted uh, posted he said May 2020 this is one of those things he you know he posted May 2022 the month of change that was one of those things he posted. Because they now felt they could do something. But little do they understand or do they know that what federal government is working assiduously on is to make sure they weaken the number of followership Mazinandekano has. And there's no way. You see, we are talking about intelligence agency here. We are not talking about Oku Marka. How you feel is your business. How you interpret it is your business. We are talking about the real game of state actors. We are not talking about your one room gossip. Talking rubbish. We are talking about realities of the time. And they were cajoled and fooled. That let them not worry. They are going to, eh, Jofo can go to hell. Mike can go to hell. We are going to help you and make sure Mazenam they cannot come out. And they were all over the internet. This is one of those things. He said, man, they were cajoled. Very, very important. That is just what it is. And you could see 
They were told, eh, don't worry, eh, the judge will grant to a eh, Mazinam the can who has spoken with him. Does Bin Tayako, do you understand that even judges, even judges have certain lawyers they bend and adjust to? Go and ask for those of those people who studied law. Especially in Nigerian cons uh, co contest, go and ask. And they were told they were just jumping up here and there. They never knew federal government does not just like government all over the world. No government fears individual. No government fears family. What government fears is the people. What government fears with it is the people. Most of you uh, who are older enough to remember Abiola. Abiola family was dealt with. Ruthlessly dealt with. But before he was dealt with, the government, first of all, divided the Yoruba people. You see, why we fall back to history, nothing is new under the sun. Absolutely nothing. Go ask for people. Go ask people. In fact, one of those things, the government started dealing with Abiola when they got convinced that Abiola support have reduced. Do you know that tomorrow the Yorubas always accused of Asanjo that he backstabbed Abiola. That was why they compensated him with presidents. Go and find out. Go and find out. Is Abiola family a, a respectable one today? Is he known? How many of you remember Abiola family? He's gone. Because government do not fear individuals. Government do not fear family. Government only fear the movement behind you. You know, and if we have some, you see about, about some people think is a issue of sentiment. Is a is a no. What do you know? Why reality is powerful. Reality does not care how you think. Reality has no respect. On how you think. You can be as emotional as you like because why we are saying all this is that in the next years to come somebody can invoke this and say ah Chica Austin said it too. Yeah he exonerated himself because internet does not forget if anybody think I'm not conscious of what I'm saying, or I'm saying for sense sake, you are you are joking. You are absolutely joking. In fact, my ease, before ease comes out from my mouth, I have analyzed and analyzed and analyzed. I'm not careless in my language usage. Absolutely not. Neither will I come and talk without having a brief information. The members of the DOS might felt it is safe for them not to talk. Uh, people might not believe them enough. It's their own decision. But in as much as <clears throat> I have a future to, to be accountable to, I should speak. Those areas I can, in as much as, I, yes, I'm talking. I can't be also mouth, so mouthish not to know my limit. So, we are definitely going to conclude, but I cannot conclude without ending up this narrative. We must understand. For those of you who might be thinking we are spending a whole lot of time, you must know this. 
you must know this. It's part, you see, it's part of the struggle. Because mistakes some of us are making is that we have not taken time to study people before us here. We must we have not taken time to ask ourselves questions. Nelson Mandela also faced the same thing. Family challenge. You can still count and count and count and count. Yeah. So you it, it does not basically mean is exclusive to us. We are saying this so that you understand realities and struggle. These are things you must see. These are things you must see. If you don't want to hear about it, it will definitely hint you from having a safe landing. Yeah. If you say, ah, well, let us not say it, or let us uh, not say it, definitely it will stay before you. So it's better you know it, see it as part of the realities to see. And we now ask ourselves, how do we conquer this menace? Yeah. Because if you pretend you don't want it, it will confront you. It will definitely confront you. There's nothing you can do about it. It will definitely confront you. So, they started talking about negotiation. They were pushing that narrative a few months ago that when you do so come on, negotiation. And people like us, I wrote, I think my article is on the public space. And I wrote about the noises on negotiation. I said nothing like that. Some people even say, why will you say that? Why will you say that? Because, hey, I hear what Barrister Lloyd was saying, and I was able to deduce those ones he was not saying. And guess what? Is the negotiation narrative still coming up? No. Where is the negotiation dialogue that they have started process? Everything died down. Is Allah making emphasis on that? No. Is the is, are the siblings making emphasis on that? No. And the question you should ask yourself: Then what is the next? Ten, because very very important. You know what they do is most cases trial and error. It's just what it is. Try and error, and they, you don't you don't just do that in a struggle. After the the, the story of negotiation. And nobody was negotiating with anybody. Because, let me tell you something. Every now and then, the leadership of the indigenous people of Biafra is putting out press statement. I want you to understand something. Hey, every now and then, the leadership is putting up press statement. Emma Powerful is putting up press statement. And if you really read their press statement, they are reacting based on events. And these guys we are pushing, saying they are negotiating. How can you tell me that they are negotiating and IPOB's press statement in most cases, is counter attack from the behavior of federal government if they misbehave. If there is a negotiation, I, I studied diplomacy in university. I studied, the, I'm, not, I'm not claiming it. I have a degree in diplomacy. And there are things we call precondition 
precondition for negotiation. You see, when people, the stupid, the most stupid and annoying thing is that people think people are stupid. It's so annoying. When you think, this is a, this is a movement of basically, let me say, about 20 or 30 million people. There are people who are deep intellectuals. They don't talk. There are people who comment in your post. Some of them are top health fellows in U.S. Some of them are, you know, legal luminaries, legal luminaries all over the world. You know that they commented and said to you, eh, "Check Austin, explain more." You think you your your maybe my small mind will tell me that they are talking from a fenyogu. Or they are talking from a corner one. So, when they said there was a negotiation, I fell back. I fell back to my textbook. Sorry, my notebook in the university. It's a, an elementary diplomacy. It is a basic study in diplomacy. There are things we call precondition for negotiation. What are the preconditions? The parties that are negotiating either directly or through process, we say, okay, before we start talking, you stop this, I will stop this. These are preconditions. Before America started talking to Talibans, the one of the preconditions is that America should stop shooting in certain places in Afghanistan. Then Taliban should stop also firing. It was called precondition for negotiation. Before Israel and Hamas started talking in Qatar, in Doha, there was a precondition. It was called ceasefire. Let us not be shooting for the negotiation process to start. But because these guys think people are stupid, they think People are at the level of their thinking. They come up as a negotiation. And I, I wrote an article. Some persons even attacked me. It doesn't bother me. Why it doesn't bother me is that it's something I know. So why should I? Your opinion is uh, E.H. Carr is one of the British res highly respected historian. He said opinion is free, fast, is sacred. Fact is sacred. Opinion is free. You, you are free for your opinion. But fact is sacred. You cannot, you cannot, you know, you cannot shake out fact. And I, I wrote extensively on that. Doubting the ground for negotiation or dialogue. But some people felt I'm with him now. And what is, where is the dialogue? Where is the negotiation? It's purely horse. Purely nonsense. Lies upon lies. Deception upon deception. Do you think the federal government is stupid? This is one thing people do not know. The federal government understand that IPOB is still making advances. The leadership has... Oh, you think they don't also have diaspora intels? They don't know who and who leadership is reaching out. They are not stupid. They threw up the narrative upon these boys. So that these boys can advise leadership to shut down. Shut down your activity. Perhaps the federal government can take advantage and advance. But the leadership never bought into that nonsense. Because if there is a negotiation, continue. There is nothing bad in negotiation. Keep on dialoguing. Let us see a level of seriousness. Then if you tell us to stop saying this, we can stop. But nothing is on the table. 
Nothing is. One who is coming up talking rubbish. You want leadership to shut down because you tweeted or posted on Facebook that there is ongoing negotiation. That is nonsense. In fact, most of you do not understand that some of the precondition for negotiation is what we call good office provision. There's something called good office provision. Before negotiation starts, you even negotiate where we are going to be where is going to be our meeting point for negotiation? It's part of the precondition for negotiation. It's called good office provision. And the neutral party, for the sake of confidence, will provide the ground of meeting. You see, these guys are, I won't say they are illiterate, but to me, I think there's something criminal intensity in them. Ask anybody if you're negotiating. Why Ghana provided what Ghana provided in Abuli is what we call good office. Ghana was neutral. If Ghana was supplying arms to Biafra or Nigeria, none of the party will accept to start negotiation in Abuli because at that moment. The place of Ghana as a neutral negotiator is no longer there. And I ask that question, who is providing the good office? Is that person a neutral character or not? These are questions I wrote in article and they could not respond to it. And I laugh. Because I know they are just doing nonsense, deceiving the gullible. But they believe that so many people are stupid. And today, nobody is talking about negotiation. A law is no longer tweeting about negotiation. Meme is no longer talking about negotiation. Let's see the new topic so that you understand the the nonsense that is going on. Let's see the new topic in town so that you understand. You see, uh, all these things, why we are showing you so that you understand. Okay, this is the new topic. It's no longer negotiation. It's no longer dialogue. Now, <clears throat> uh, you see, certain countries will be, they will sit down and laugh. Because if you interpret the Biafran population from the angle of these guys, what it means is that this is a population of stupid people. If you interpret IPOB from the perceptive of these guys. You are not wrong to say IPOB is a movement of idiots, fools. Because people that reason this way, <laughs> either you call them con artists or you call them stupid fools. No two ways about it. Now, they are no longer talking about, you know, Negotiation. The thing, meme, you know, posted yesterday was the task is tedious, but what it? Now listen. <clears throat> the task is tedious, but what it? Now the question you should ask yourself basically is who gave the task? Very, very important. Who gave the task? Who sent for the who sent for the task? If you have not unmasked the character who sent the task, you will not understand the next thing we're going to we're going to talk about about this post. He said the task is studious. 
Now, who gave the task? Invariably, he will tell you that he's in the that gave the task. Because, to the best of my knowledge, him himself does not recognize the leadership. He does not have respect for the leadership. So, invariably, Mazin Namdekano must have given the task to him. Now, look at the signal he's sending. That IPOB have been reduced to family thing. I will not say Mazin Namdekano sent. And this post was made. Let's think very carefully. What we are doing is what we call chronological analysis. We are trying to link up events and ask why. That is what investigation is all about. When you hear that intelligence agencies, uh, FBI are investigating, what they are doing is that they connect events. And if there are areas that are not interconnected, do you now begin to ask questions? Why? Why? Why is that? Why is this? Why is there no connection? Why is the connectivity lacking here? That is all about investigation. Now, he made this post after it was said he had an incident of somebody stealing a car. You know, the story that flew some time ago. And uh, the writer subjected him for video, you know, for video, this thing, which he posted that Mazen Nandekano said nobody should discuss about that, you know. Now, all of a sudden, he told us a task had been given. Who gave the task? Nobody know. And funny enough, within this period, he traveled to Switzerland from the brokers of Mazichinasa. And to the best of our knowledge, he traveled with four persons, Sontomo Okonkwo, the wife and the and the wife brother four of them now they tried meeting ipob leadership in switzerland you know trying to tell them that Unindu. listen very carefully that Unindu told them to address IPOB family in Switzerland. The coordinator listened to him and discovered everything was lying. And they reported to the DOS. Listen, so you see, uh, just listen and understand what we are saying. The, co the coordinator of Switzerland that he approached, that Onyendu said he should gather IPOB in Switzerland that he wants to address that he wants to address them. Remember, Kanonta is in Europe. So, Kanonta could not do that. He could not send a message to Kanonta to address IPOB in Switzerland. So, he means that Kanonta does not have the temerity, does not have what it takes to address, no. Now, is him that is just coming out from a case, a mess, and he has told us that the task is studious already. You can now understand. Because if it's something that is urgent, Kanonta is living in Germany. He can easily take up a train and find himself in Switzerland and do the delivery. But because it might not be coming out from Onion, he have earlier, earlier told us that the task is studious. But what it maybe is a deal or whatever. You can now understand the whole thing. Now, when the coordinator 
report, reported to the leadership that this is what is going on. This guy met him, cajoled the leadership, blackmailed the leadership, and asked him to gather the people because they listened to the broadcast. They listened to what China Sanwuru did. He smartly, immediately, this is Meme, he smartly <laughs> posted this speech immediately today. Now, he smartly went to UN front, took a picture, and said, he didn't say anything, he didn't write anything, but he smartly, after listening to this, the picture and discover he has been busted that their trip to destroy IPOB in diaspora maybe that is the task that was given to him to go and destroy IPOB in diaspora he immediately after listening and understood that the thing don't cast he went to UN building and to which any I can go I can even go to UN building and snap just the way he snapped but to tell you how smart he was, he even made sure because he knew that people are already asking, do video, do video, let us see you where. He now told the camera person, maybe Son Tomo Konkwa is the one that took the picture, and said, stay far. Take this picture from far. So that even when people zoom, they cannot see how pale I am. How unhealthy I am you cannot understand what we're talking about he just smartly rap he didn't write anything at least to say I'm in UN building that is the task that I was then he didn't write or oh, let me I, I'm here to just take picture he kept it neutral because he did not want to be held on a particular narrative. But he made sure that the picture was taken afar so that no matter how you zoom, you cannot understand his current status. Because his plot to undermine IPOB in Europe was busted. He rushed and took pictures. Let me not tell you because our people are very, very stupid. I'm sorry, most of our people, not all our people. I'm sorry for that. I will do that statement. Because of our people, some of our people are not smart. You see, he rushed to UN building. One thing he does not know, that's why I said... <laughs> everything the more he's trying to patch up the more he fell do you know that this september un all over the world in every country is busy with what we call un summit because they believe that biafrans are illiterate they don't know anything so invariably He just took this picture so that the illiterates and the gullibles among us will say, hey, okay, the, 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 the duty that is studious is for him to go to UN and negotiate. Because they believe our people are stupid. They believe we don't have sense. They believe we, we are not human enough to think. But he failed to understand that every UN agency is preoccupied currently with the plan for summit, UN summit this September. Today is September 1st. Every UN agency. And where is that summit? It's an annual summit that is held every time in New York. Every September in New York. Go and research. So what is he going to UN for? If there is any UN building to be focused on, it's not in Switzerland, it's in New York.
You now understand what I'm talking about. But because he was desperate to cover the mess, he just went and took picture to an office that their present and focus is already in New York for the annual U.S. summit. But if you ask him, because he believed people are stupid, he believed that people are not informed, he will tell you that he's in Switzerland to have a meeting with the U.N. Is that funny? But he doesn't know that, even though we are not that too educated, at least we know that every September, that all UN agencies' attention focuses in New York for the summit of head of states and government. Is is even a Google information? Maza see the heart to say is here. Welcome, Maz. So you understand what we are talking about. Now let me tell you some of some of you things you don't understand. Because, you see, why I'm saying this is that the future of my kids are in stake. My own future is as well in stake, at stake. That makes us stakeholders. If we don't deflate and, you know, all this nonsense, we end up messing ourselves up, believing in illusions. The Biafran struggle is a national interest. You should understand that. You should understand that. Now, let me tell us something. Maybe I have to um, summarize so that I don't bog us with a lot of narratives and information. Now, let me tell us something for, for, for your own understanding. Do you know that Meme and the brother Kalonka have been into legal mess all over the world? They took, they have, they have currently, as I speak to you, which they have abandoned and run away. They have a fine from British court, fine of 70,000 pounds for abusement of judicial procedure in UK. Because remember the UK case, most of you do not understand the, how these guys, how funny they are. At the earlier stage, they told you, eh, they, they are pursuing an international case. Remember Bruce Fenn? And they made sure that Bruce Fenn cajoled a Geoffo, that a Geoffo was envying him. Bruce Fenn had nothing to do with the leadership because they told Bruce Fenn to stay away from leadership that it that he was an inter, a family international lawyer and most of you were applauding them most of you were saying eh, they are doing for your information they ran away from UK court they have a fine of 70,000 fine unpaid and they left that one. Kanonta took IPOB to court, him and the Nenya in Germany. After the matter, IPOB Germany put an appeal and they, they are seeing the possibility of Kanonta going to jail and everything nice to, you know, see how to dodge from that mess remember in uk they have seventy thousand fan unpaid 
Who are they bringing this problem? In the name of Mazen Nam Dekan. In Germany, there's also legal mess. In their effort to destroy the leadership. So why are we saying this? You see, one of those things I bless God for in this struggle is this. I have never, I can hit my chest to say, I have never, since inception of this struggle, depend for anybody to give me one naira or fifty koko. Then I will be bendable to you. That is rubbish. Those who knows me know that I don't remember. I, I do my best to move on, to sustain myself economically. So for that reason, I do that which pleases my creator and my conscience. Any other thing is rubbish. It's pure nonsense. Any other thing is nonsense. I might not be super rich. I'm not hungry. That is just it. That is just the way it is. So, for those of you who do not understand, we are letting you understand all these things because posterity. Because some of you will come up tomorrow and say, eh, what is this You know about all these things. Why didn't you speak out? Let this record be a judge between me and whosoever. will come up and say, you did not see. You see, finally, because I caught all these things, this mess, and we didn't look at the possibility and the prospect of achieving, because if I read some of you, your comments, some of you are saying, eh, I am a fool, I am one now, okay, 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 that is nonsense. You don't need those ill feelings. What we are telling you is one of the battles you are fighting. I want you to understand that. I want you to understand that. We are telling one of the battles you are fighting. We are not telling you that this is the end of this project. Because some of you will say, ah, hey, if this thing is happening, we are gone. That is rubbish. That is pure rubbish. Are we going to see this? We will see it. You can see him standing before you in monument. And the next thing, some of the God labels will be shouting, Hey, that is rubbish. UN, UN can never and has never created any country. Go and ask. Countries are created by the activities of superpowers. Put me anywhere. There is no country on the surface of earth. What you can give is resolution. Resolution this. Resolution that. Resolution. What gives country, what creates country is the conflict of superpowers. If you are able to attract one superpower on your side and another one started fighting that interest, you are made. We are not talking international politics. Some people will not understand because some of you are so gullible. You are happy with the picture you are seeing, that monument picture. That is what... You know, we are not telling you how it works. I sometimes made, made a statement I said to us, I said, I wrote it, I said, until we get to Korean Peninsula level. And that is the stage we are advancing. It's evolving. We are approaching it. It's moving. And they are setting this boy to keep on distracting people. That is what it is. They are setting this boy to keep on distracting people. 
if you don't understand what we are talking about, you will not understand what we are saying. All these guys you are seeing, whether Canon or Memo, they are just, you know, they are just, uh, how will I say it? They are just uh, in theater. You can you can say they are just uh, the lowest of his character. They are just featured at the low kada. We have men. We have quality men and women. You might not hear from them. They might not even comment. They are interest parties in the struggle. Not to what this your man is doing. Not what he's doing. You go to Switzerland, you start taking picture. And if you watch that picture, you understand that that monument of UN was on kept one. Probably this is a car park section. Not the even front. This might be the car park section. So, we must understand what we are talking about. People should understand that leaders are not perfect. Understand this. Leaders are not perfect. Mazin Namdekano is a wise man. If Mazin Namdekano is not wise, he wouldn't have put up a leadership on motion. Because he knew, even Jesus himself at the time, you know. Let me let me tell you something. Let me let me tell you something. Jesus, at the time of his destiny, was telling his father, "I said, if possible, let this let this cup pass." What that shows you is the fallibility of mankind. Mazen Namdekan is so wise that he knew and put up a structure and emotion. Because he knew, let's assume there's nothing like that. These boys would have just messed up everything. They would have just messed up everything. The politicians have no regard for them. Because the politicians knew how far they dial with them. Do they shake? Do you see politicians checking at them? No. Because every politician in the land knows <laughs> a lot about them. So wh 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 who will you threaten? You cannot. So the point now is how does he destabilize IPOB diaspora. Why are they not sending him? If actually Elima has done what they want them, what they want him to do, why is this guy released for that assignment? It's a simple question. Ask yourself. If actually Elima have achieved what they want him to achieve, why is this guy released? For this assignment. He told you the assignment was studious. I projected that post of his. Tudious. Hey. Tudious how? Are you an M Israel? Tudious how? The next one we saw was this. So why are we saying this? Every single one of us should understand. That Mazen Namdekano have shown a very reasonable number level of commitment. His own immediate family members, the wife, the kids, have also paid a genuine and legitimate sacrifice. Or should I say sacrifices? And none of us will come up and tomorrow and say, I I I was deceived by this. That is rubbish. That is practically rubbish. And that's why 
I took it as a responsibility to make us understand the nonsense these guys are doing. So that tomorrow you don't say no, is anybody deceived you. Nobody deceived anybody. Nobody deceived anybody. If there is anybody in a better position, I mean in a better position, to speak the mind of the leader of this struggle is the wife. Of course it's the wife. Though she's not a talking type, she has her reservation, she's highly diplomatic, you know, but you can see the level of decoro, self-preservation, and these are the kind of qualities that are trust respect. Not the you know junketing and the, you know funny attitude that these these two boys are doing here and there. So um let me see how many hours we have done. Oh god, goodness me. We've done two hours six minutes. That is quite a huge one. Really, really quite a huge one. You know, so <clears throat> um, we just have to come to the end of um, this program. Good, because I said before uh, um, I close, we have to understand something. Please, it's an antidote to headache that this program must have given some of us, because I know already, some of, some of us are already uh, having headache. Let me tell you something. I just want, is an antidote to small headache that most of you might be having now, because I understand how emotional we are. Um, some of you might start having headache now, looking for paracetamol, in, para in their cupboard, you know, to see how to sleep well, uh, sleep well tonight. You need to sleep well. Let me tell you something. <clears throat> Nigeria as a country is facing a severe problem. It's facing a very severe problem. And very, very important to understand that. You see, it's obvious that there is no national law. There is no national, you know, um, there is no national unity. It's obvious all over the places. But the mistake we will not make as a people is fail to be organized. And there is no organization that we can achieve aside what Mazen Namdekala have set up. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody say, man say, I think it's good say, I need not forever. Anyway, we must remain. You see, I I want to tell us something. This is final. It's very, very important we understand so that uh, we, we close for this evening prayer. The Nigerian government understands something. And that is how countries all over the world behave. There is nothing bad. For Nigerian government to, you know, expect IPOB to collapse is normal. We are in a battle, so your opponent expect you the worst from you. You know, uh, expect the worst for you, just the way you also expect. Now, most of you never knew what is going on. The Nigerian government is in a very severe panic because of what is happening within the neighborhood. Uh, recently, the army chief uh, traveled to Niger to ask for understanding because of what is happening in the north. In the north currently, uh, since Niger charged, they decide not to 
support Nigeria to fight terrorism. People are not sleeping in Sokoto, you can verify. In, in most of the northern states, people are not sleeping. In fact, as a matter of fact, the service chiefs were asked to relocate to Sokoto recently because of things that are happening north. When a country, excuse me, when a country is facing such situation, her end is near. Her end is near. A lot of people have concluded that Nigeria is on futuristic. A lot of analysts, a lot of commentators, a lot of investors, because we keep on telling, making you to understand things that are happening. Uh, foreign investors are on a bad level because they believe the country doesn't have future. But the imperialists would not want to have an evil society that is not faced with conflict. And that is the project they are working on. I suppose I have said something on the recruitment of the army. Mazitina has said about it yesterday, but I suppose I have touched it a bit because we are facing a very severe mental hybrid battle but in as much as we understand the game and we are relating to our people the efficacy is not going to be deep i want you to understand that you see nigeria is collapsing i just want to tell you in a very speed lane and this generation of Ndibo have done an amazing thing because we are unifying our people, we are redefining, we are redefining our map to what it used to be. Thank God for our brother uh, who is doing, this our brother that is doing uh, this uh, Igbo program, you know, visiting a lot of people. I've forgotten his name and his platform, One TV, you know. So, there is a current project Britain is trying to do. They understand the speed at which we are going to unify, unify the nation, the Igbo nation. And they also understand the interest of certain entities. I don't want to mention countries. Yes, Namen. Namen is a, is a very wonderful guy. That guy is doing what Ohaneze could not do. What Ohaneze could not do for 30 years. Namen TV have done it less than three to four years. I mean what Ohaneze could not do for the entire, entirety. Namen have just done it. Namen TV has done it less than three years. And this is exactly what this project is all about. We are decentralizing our strength. Those who could do, or you know, um, like another, ndozom gakwa eke nofuma, or ndeke no, our people ndi non a psychological warfare nubwa osa, enwene, enwene, umunani, ninkeja handugu, mepecha iru apuko, yota. Because Mepe Charaha platform, Yota pages. We're going to handle go. Then can I sue go now? So be an one. Then we're going to have so so. Ah, how now? Why? You know because he got some of this platform. He has China. Anna Choko, and then they are also and the full and you know, not for now. But more. Then can I roll? Then I make a new one. You know, 
So we have to come to the end of this program. <laughs> As a matter of fact, we have to come to the end of this program. Uh, we have to just come to the end of this program. And I believe uh, <clears throat> we have said much as we can, you know, uh, as we could or as we have to say. So we have time. We have time. Uh, it's just that the weeks are always too busy for us. If not, we would have been, would have been, uh, you know, we would have, would have been coming within the week. But at least Saturday, Sunday, we'll try what we do. So, this year, Nick, everybody, this year, from here, I want to say good night and do enjoy yourself.